So, as you guys may or may not know, a long-term project of mine has been to try to add secure trip codes to the new 8chan software. But I didn't actually know the best way to do it, and I've been thinking a lot about it. And I was thinking that probably the best way to do it would be key signing. So, the problem with key signing, though, is I can't just allow the server to be the only one that's trusted with the key. And I did want to use GPG at first, but the GPG private keys are too long. They're uh, 1,024 bytes just to be, you know, secure. So it wouldn't work for the same kind of uh, private key thing that I want to do. I want to make it so that you can type, you know, a password like you do now for a secure trip code. And that will be enough bytes to properly encrypt the document. Um, or not encrypt, but sign the document. And still people can't guess your key. So ED25519, which is used in Libsodium, is only 64 bytes. But uh, I would have to write all sorts of infrastructure for that to work properly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm the first thing I was going to write was a key manager. But the problem is, I before then, I didn't actually know how to write GUIs very well. Desktop GUIs. Uh, I'd done it before, of course. Um, the last time that I had wrote a desktop GUI was actually when I was in high school, believe it or not. And um, I had written a game for one of my classes I had wrote like a board game that we had to make and that was a lot of fun but I feel like I didn't really uh do a good job looking back at it today because I used GTK and GTK is a real mess it's really hard to use uh it, it's just it it's just really I don't like it it looks like crap on Windows like I made my game in uh, Linux, because that's what I've been using since I was 12. And then I had to make a Windows version, you know, after I was all done, so that it would work on the school computer for my class. And it, it just, the native rendering of GTK wasn't good. It looked really bad. So, of course, the teacher still gave me an A, because everybody else used construction paper to make their board game. And I wrote a computer program, so I got an A, but... It, it, it really didn't look good, so. And then, you know, after that, uh, I started a lot of web development stuff, and I haven't done any desktop development in such a long time. Until now. So, I was writing my key manager, but I didn't really know how to use Qt, which is what I decided to use for the key manager. Because I had bad experiences with GTK, and there's GTK3 now, and it looks like total crap here. Here's a program that uses GTK3. It's have a control. I think this is the only one on my system. And you can just see, like, it looks really odd. The buttons and stuff. So, you know, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I decided this time around I was going to use Qt because Qt is better. So I did, and when I was writing the key manager, I noticed I didn't really know what I was doing. So I decided to work on a hobby project so that I could try to learn about Qt until I do the real thing, which will be a key manager for Libsodium 825519 keys. Uh, but a friend of mine asked me if he knew a way that I could show the keys that he was pressing on the screen, like in Temple OS so that he can make like a blender tutorial. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever used blender. It's very keyboard heavy. I have it on my computer. I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing though. I didn't make it for me. So here's blender. Hold on, it's overflowing my, there we go. So um, in blender, you know, you have to do a lot of clicking and stuff like this. Middle clicks and control and then scroll wheel. And 
if you were to be making a Blender tutorial, half the time that you're making the tutorial would be full of saying things like, okay, and now I'm pressing Shift A, and uh, now I'm pressing R to get a circle. There's my circle. Oh, what is that? Maybe that's not a circle. I don't really know how to use this. Oh no, it's a camera. Okay, well, maybe that's what it is. No, it's not a camera either. Okay, I don't actually know. It's been so long since I used this program. Let's see, what did I click again? Shift A, and then Shift A, and then... Oh, it is a camera. But when I hit zero... Okay, well, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. So... Or say you are giving a tutorial about Vi, right? And instead of having to say all the time, well, now I'm pressing Control A to make the number go up by one, you could just do it. And it would appear on the screen, and if you wanted, you could have a history window to show your last actions. You know, so... Uh, I figured, why not? Um, so I made this little... Q keys on screen program. Apparently, there's one for Windows called Key Pose, and then there's Key Center for, um, I don't know that. Mac OS, yeah. And then there's a QI press for Windows, so. Yeah, um, I had, you know, quite a bit of fun writing this, to be honest. It's really long. Yeah, this, uh, this file is 647, but it's probably over a thousand lines in total. I didn't really count. But it, it was fun to write, and it did teach me a lot about the key manager. So now I can write my secure trip code key manager that people can install and they can have their keys all on their computer. And then if we ever get into a time where we're using like a decentralized image board, you don't have to trust the node operator with your trip code. You know, it can be all on your computer or you can still trust them if you want, you know. I'll make it backwards compatible into the trust method. Okay, where if you type a hash and then a password, it will still work. But that's not the point. So anyway, Q keys on screen. Took me so long to, this took me a week to write. I, at first I just had this simple part, and then, I don't know what happened, I just, I kept working on it and working on it, and I kept thinking of different things to add, like, it has so much dumb stuff that you can do. You can set the ignored keys if you want. Like, see how I keep saying left click and right click, well, what if I don't want that? What if I, every time I click, I just, just don't want it to show? Well, you can do that, and there you go, and now I'm clicking, but it's not... It's not appearing anymore. <laughs> or say you don't want the scroll wheel to appear. You could do that. I even made it so you could change the divider. So, you know... Oh, I'm not running iBus, damn it. Okay. So, say that you, you don't want a plus. You want... Uh, Unicode 2022. Oops. Now you press... Oh, okay, I don't... I don't know why that didn't work, but... I guess my little iBus thing is a good figure, right? I have this Unicode plugin in iBus, and if you press Control shift u and then 2022, it should come with a bullet, but that's not what happened. So, oh well. Um, what else did I do? You can change the color. Now, this is provided by QT. It's a Q color dialog, that, which is another nice thing about QT, how much they provide. It was actually really easy. There's only one workaround that I had to do for a bug in QT, which in my GTK game that I made in high school, I had so many workarounds that I had to do because GTK is so bad. I had to like, yeah, it, it awful. I, I'm never going to go back to that. After I've done QT work, I, you know, if I ever have to make a desktop application, this is what I'll use. Um, it works well with KDE too. It matches my theme and stuff, so, uh, yeah, so that's Q keys on screen, you want to try it, oh, 
I wanted to show Temple OS. I have it open. Yeah, okay. So I said I based it off Temple OS, and I really did. When I first started this, you couldn't even drag it around. It was really simple. And it was in the top right, like the Temple OS right here. See the escape? That's because I just pressed escape in it. I don't know if you guys have ever used this. I actually really like Temple OS. Um, I'm, I'm not smart enough to actually use it perfectly, but it's a lot of fun just to use. Oh, see? I, I don't even know what I'm doing. That's supposed to launch your editor. But, oh. Yeah, okay, so... But it has this thing in the top right, which tells you the key that you're pressing. So that's what I copied into my, you know, thing here in KDE. I couldn't find, when I first started, I couldn't find anything that did it. And then I tried different keywords and I found this GNOME program called uh, Keymon. And it was so buggy that I decided I would continue because I already started anyway. And it was written in the... GTK, and I have declared holy war on GTK. Everybody that uses GTK is a heretic. QT is the true way to go about, you know, uh, Linux development. <laughs> it works on everything. It works on Mac and Windows, too. And with GTK, all that stuff is just an afterthought. They make it work on uh, Linux, and then, oh, that's it, you know. And then when it comes to, like, the Mac version, it it's just... It launches exports, so you have to launch a fake exorg inside Mac to be able to use GTK. It's so stupid. And then the Windows version, it looks like shit. So, yeah. Anywho, this is my, so that's my little program that I made. Uh, it was fun, kind of. Sure took me, took my mind off of things, so I worked on it. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot about that feature. You can fade out the last keys while you're doing your tutorial. So people know how old they are. So I just incremented that negative 15 by 1. And you know what key I pressed. And it'll say how old it is. So, you know, oh, it's not selected. I did it again. And um, I forget the rate that that fades out. It looks quite nice, actually. And it doesn't even use that much CPU. So... Yeah. Anywho, I think I'll stop this video now. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. I'll put the GitHub in the description. Right now, there's no pip package. You have to install the dependencies manually. But it's not that hard. You just do pip install evdev, and then if you have pyqt5 installed, it'll work. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.